Hey guys, so welcome back to Wild and Basic. In case you guys haven't seen, I uploaded the new cover art. I am so happy about it because it's like, it really represents what this podcast is all about. It's a little wild, little basic, little all over the place. That is me. <laughs> that thumbs up me as a person, but that also thumbs up this podcast and I'm so happy how it turned out. Actually, that was, I remember, a cover that I have a look at artwork collage because that's the style that I made uh, for my merch and that never like, we ended up using it but I wanted to use it at one point then it kind of happened and now also the merch is coming for the podcast as well and it's kind of matching so together with the colors and everything so it kind of came together because we actually shot a bunch of other pictures for the cover art but it did not work at all because the pictures we took was very dark not like dark but like color scheme was like very darker and like more blue which is still nice I feel like I might end up just posting it as like a regular Instagram picture but it did not seem to work out for the podcast but I'm so happy for the cover art so you guys might see it uh, maybe not on Spotify because it's a video but you might be able to see it from the show thing or you can see it on YouTube because they have the podcast version um, but you can also see it on other platforms like iHeartRadio or wherever you listen to your podcast but just wanted to tell you guys because it was like I really wanted to change it and like represent what it was now what it is now and I feel like that kind of thumbs it up hopefully there's more to come but yeah I just wanted to put that out there because merch is coming I'm working on it I have gotten the samples there are a few more adjustments I'm gonna make and have to do a photo shoot because, duh, you know, that's a fun part of it. But I just want to tell you guys now. Anyway, so today we are gonna be talking about how to be calm in every situation. Let me uh, say like a little bit about why I decided this. It, okay, first of all, I am the kind of person that usually I am calm yeah, usually I'm calm because I have, uh, depending on the things, I usually am like, oh, okay, I get it, like, I act calm. But then there are things that very simple, could be super simple or very, like, small things that I could be, like, flustered. I could get flustered and I could be not calm at all. Like, I could lose my shit, seriously. I have learned so much from this experience and I have been keep seeing it because I have this like app on my watch also on my phone it's called motivation and that's where I like kind of inspired it from uh, that it was saying that train your mind to be calm in every situation or every experience and that's where I wanted to I kind of inspired I was like I feel like I should really make an episode about this because I don't think I have because I think it's so important to talk about and some of the ways to like to to try that so you can implement that in your life and how it can benefit you because I think there's huge benefit behind that and hence why I wanted to make an episode about it it's not gonna be full like a very lengthy episode but I just wanted to put it out there uh, in case anyone might find this helpful because at the end of the day I want to really focus more of this season of this podcast talking about mental health and the things that or self-improvement so we can improve ourselves including myself uh, because that's the entire reason I wanted to start a podcast in the first place and I feel like that would be very useful for most of you guys anyway so that's the episode but a little bit of update and things that that's going on in like social media and everywhere obviously in case you guys haven't seen <laughs> Met Gala just happened this past weekend it was it was kind of like interesting this year let me start saying one thing because this year's theme is car the big bigot i think that's what they're referring to carl lagerfeld because carl lagerfeld he could be a great designer but i wouldn't say he's not the most respected designer like he has said pretty like bigotry things he has said like a woman shouldn't be curvy he has said some things about i think like gay people too I don't know he has said many things that wasn't necessarily nice nor just 
even a human thing to say, like nice thing, like mean, it was mean, it was straight up mean. So I don't necessarily support him as a person, but as a designer, he's pretty talented. So that's the homage to Karl Lagerfeld. So let me first start, and I even posted about this on TikTok. They made the carpet like different this year. So it was like a kind of like a white carpet with some with three stripes, like blue, uh, green, and blue, red, and there was something else, some other color. Uh, Colgate colors, literally Colgate colors. Like look up Colgate and look up the red carpet or just go to my TikTok, you will see. I was like, what is this? Like carpet, like red carpet itself, like the background, it just legit straight up looked so ugly. Like I, I just looked at it, I'm like, this is the ugliest thing I have ever seen. Like, I don't know how any dress would look nice in this carpet. Like that carpet was super ugly. I mean, it, this is coming from someone who's wearing this, <laughs> this and like wearing this. Like, don't judge me for this. But I'm just saying, I feel like that red carpet was awful. But there are some people they really pulled this look out. Like um, Dua Lipa. If you guys want to look at it, Dua Lipa. She looked like a princess. So cute. I love her as a singer and as like a personality but she's like she looks really hot obviously sydney swinney she always looks so hot like i don't know how she does it but she looks so hot like if i was straight i would probably be like tripping <laughs> i need to shut up i'm just saying Sydney Sweeney, I'm trying to see who else. Emma Chamberlain, she's always like classy, looks nice. I actually really admire Emma Chamberlain because I think she really grew, grew so much uh, just being a YouTuber to like being a business owner like Chamberlain Coffee, then also being in being on Vogue and also now like interviewing people. I feel like that will be her next thing. Like she could be like, she could do this like on and on until like, I don't know, she retires. like. I admired that path for her and honestly that I wouldn't mind that path for myself either like that's kind of a nice path I'm not sure about the business owner part because I do have to figure that out because I love how she figured it out for herself and Chamberlain coffee because I love don't get me wrong I have tried Chamberlain coffee some of the coffee stuff I liked some I didn't I want to try the new stuff that she sells at the what is the word for it uh, Walmart yes uh, it's already like pre-packaged espresso uh, at Walmart. I do want to try that because there was some controversy, but I've tried her like earlier coffees and that was not bad, but it was expensive though. It was definitely expensive. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying I would want to explore that interviewing career because that's kind of cool. Like interviewing just like really famous people and all. That's like really, really nice. I would be, I would literally die. <laughs> Oh, the last one I would just say, Doja. She was interviewing Doja, look that up. Like that video is so funny because Doja was uh, acting one of the cats, well, or one of the cats, I mean the cat of Karl Lagerfeld. In case you guys don't know, this is the most absolute thing, like ridiculous thing. Karl Lagerfeld's cat is the richest cat in the world because he left, I don't know, almost all of his hair, like uh, money to his cat. So Jared Leto from Morbius, he dressed up as his cat. And also <laughs> uh, I think there was little Naz as the one of the cat as the cat also, but also Doja Cat because Doja Cat. She was responding to Emma Chamberlain as like meow meow. <laughs> this is so funny. I don't know how Emma did it because I would have lost my patient and be like move away. Hence this episode. <laughs> Anyways, but it's, it was really fun. I enjoyed more of those interactions versus the looks itself. I have to be honest. Even Kim Kardashian, look, her look was like, I mean, it was nice, but I did not like it at all. I'm sorry. It was like, whatever. The look that was really good, which was, some people, some people like were, nah, they were like, oh, it's not that good. Kylie. Kylie looked hot. Kylie, Sydney Sweeney, they look like so freaking hot. Kylie looked like, with the red and everything, she looked so good. Tired, but she looked really good. Anyways, I'm gonna end that on that note because I could go on, on, and on about Meg Gala, but 
definitely check it out. Those were some of the things that, some of the looks that I enjoyed and I feel like they were fun. So anyways, now let's get on to today's episode. Let's first dissect why this is important in the first place. What I would first say is I think being calm and centered in every situation kind of makes you manage like yourself better and uh, like as your whole being, like well-being as a person and obviously makes situation a lot less stressful and also just like it helps you make better decisions because I think 9 out of 10 when you think about it the decisions you have made that were kind of hasty or that were just kind of like in the moment or you were angry or you were just kind of not it, because it doesn't necessarily have to be angry or you were too emotional they're not necessarily the best decisions I know this from myself there are many times I have kind of had the feeling then when that feeling passed and like when I look back at the situation I'm like that was not my best moment like I could have done better I didn't needless to say hence this <laughs> example and I feel like there is many situations I always just mentioned for that for sure which I'm gonna get into it a little bit but I just feel like there's definitely so many benefits from this because I think as a human being we are taught that we should express ourselves we should you know be honest but I feel like that also doesn't mean that we have to just be so out there with our emotions that we cannot control and that can also affect us physically and emotionally because I think we don't realize that when we are so out there with our emotions or like how angry we are or how emotional we are or how within how we are in with our feelings um, that takes a toll on us and I'm gonna get into it right now with some ways to I guess like fix that but I think I remember from myself, from the very first time that I remember when I was, I think in a relationship at that time, that um, I think I find out something about the guy. Not, it's not about like anyone very recent, it was like a while ago. And I think that made me kind of felt uncomfortable at the moment because um, I am not someone who's comfortable when their exes, when they keep like in touch with their exes or they're always talking to their ex. I feel like I understand sometimes it's so hard to cut the tie between your ex, like unless you just straight up block them. And I feel like if, especially if you have dated someone for a long time, kind of like as a marriage, it's like they're, they never just like cut off. But I think when I find out at first with that and how he wanted me to meet him and stuff like that that at that time and that was something that like me first experiencing and I was like I don't know maybe 23 22 at that time it was a lot for me and I was kind of like feeling all insecure and like feeling so much about it and I was cr like having a conversation with him and crying I was like all over the place maybe not a good example but what I'm trying to say is like I feel like at that time I gave him so much power and I was not even thinking clearly what, what was causing this, whatever. And that made the situation even a lot worse. I mean, afterwards, when I did meet and like everything, it was kind of actually okay. It didn't turn out anything that bad, per se. Uh, but I just feel like at the time, when I first heard about it, I felt kind of ambushed that I'm like, I have to do this. So like, I need to talk to him or whatever. Um, like going to this dinner, I was kind of very scared, you know, I was like, I'm not ready for this But and also I was kind of like feeling insecure. I'm like, what is this happening? Is this going to be like some weird situation with their ex or like do I have to be a part of this? Like there are so many feelings uh, risen and at that time I, I could not control myself I was so emotional and I don't think he has ever seen me like that I don't think I have ever seen myself like that so I'm just saying just an example so that that took a toll on me and I feel like I couldn't concentrate on school I couldn't do anything it was so much for me and I, I know that for sure so just like putting it out there that that could be a lot hence that's the episode that I want to talk about so first 
practicing mindfulness, meaning being present in the moment. I think it is hard uh, sometimes like not being present in the moment uh, to just be like, because I think sometimes being calm requires that just think about this time. Not even like think about like this year per se, but think about today or this hour. Because I think sometimes it, it's harder for us to be calm about the whole picture. Like I mentioned very in, in my, one of the episodes that like um, we always have this FOMO about the future sometimes, which is true. But I feel like, and the same thing applies here, is that like we could, sometimes it's very hard to be calm when we think about our future. It is super hard to be calm uh, thinking about what we'll be doing next year, where will we be next year, like very perfect example, I'm gonna put it out there. This place, I signed a lease for 15 months. Sometimes in my head I'm thinking like what am I gonna do after 15 months, like am I gonna find another apartment, am I gonna stay in Miami, am I gonna leave Miami, am I gonna, like what am I gonna, am I gonna release, like I have no idea, I'm just saying, like I feel like when you think about stuff like that, that could obviously make you anxious but this example <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that like you can make yourself very stressed stressed very easily it is like I feel like the way the whole thing is working out right now with everything honestly to be fair uh, in our lives we can easily get stressed like from a, even a simple thing hence I feel like it's important to just focus on the moment focus on the time like at this the, the like hour or focus on the day don't think about the future just yet because i think future always makes us scared scared about what we're going to be where we're going to be even if we're going to have a future which is the reason i feel like it's important to just like focus on what you can do at the moment uh, especially i feel like when you focus on those small increments it's it helps us a bit uh, uh, more centered and calm because I think when you think about like instead of thinking about like oh my god I haven't finished this thing for today think about what you can finish right now at this hour because I feel like I haven't there are many times actually even just today like that was coming up to me I was like oh I have to record my podcast episode or I have to respond to this email I have to um what is it go on TikTok and post a video and like go on live when you say it like that, it's actually I was like so overwhelmed that I was like, let me just see what I can do at this right now. Then I can focus on other things. It is so much easier to say, but I just think that helps so much, like tremendously, to just like take it a little bit at a time because life is so hard, guys. Sometimes I feel like adulting overall is so hard, but I think we can make our lives a lot harder by just thinking like that like every single thing instead we could think of like smaller picture smaller steps um, as much as some people don't like to think that I think that actually is very helpful and helps a lot second uh, breathing technique like learning to breathe deeply this is kind of like uh, goes along with meditation and I'm telling you I'm so new to meditation um, and that doesn't really like I, I cannot give you guys so much tip about it but from my experience and there's this new app actually from Google and it's almost free completely free and I think they even have like a discount that you can get like uh, for a year which is a lot cheaper than any app I, I have seen even calm app it's called balance you can get started on that but I've tried a couple breathing technique that like breathing deeply for like solid five minutes or so and like inhaling and like listening to your voice listening to your thoughts and just kind of like because I feel like th that's something I've tried a couple times um, it doesn't necessarily solve the problem I gotta be honest but there are many times that especially when I am driving if I have a road rage or if I have got some bad news or just news that that kind of like uh, gets me off track or just like throws me off I literally pulled over <laughs> somewhere and just tried some breathing technique for five minutes. Trust me, it helps. Like, it legit helps. It is 
because I feel like sometimes when we receive a bad news or when we get something that we don't need, we don't want, or something bad happens, we cannot control life, obviously. But I think when you take a moment and just like collect yourself, then you can respond better in that situation. Because there are also many times that like I've gotten some like emails or whatever that kind of like pissed me off, and I was like, ugh, like let me let me just like write this like you know whatever you know like obviously certain words that I don't want to use in the email. But obviously, like, you know, it pisses you off. But I'm like, you can't do that. And you cannot collect yourself that easily. Try this breathing technique. Just five minutes, I promise you, it's going to make a huge difference. Third, practicing positive self-talk. I am probably the last person to say this because I am my own worst enemy. Like, I am the enemy of myself, literally. I always doubt myself. I always say shitty things about myself like to myself like i just not the person for this but there are times <laughs> that i try to just like lift myself up and that has not necessarily i would be i would be lying if i'd be like oh my god it helped me so much because i am trying i'm getting there but just a little bit self um love really helps a lot like speaking to yourself and just like talking to yourself like how you have overcame certain situations because I think uh, like very recently I was kind of having some doubts about moving here and like how it's been maybe I was homesick and stuff like that there was like a bunch of things then I remembered how it all came out to me right after college as well how I was back to New York and like starting over kind of felt like moving in moving for the first time moving to New York for the first time so it was a lot for me and I remember how difficult it was at first, but after six months or so, I was kind of like handling myself. I was like, oh, this is New York. Like, I like New York again. Like, it was, it was working out, but that was not easy. So I realized what I have accomplished in there. So I'm like, I know it's coming here for me as well. So I just feel like for myself, uh, like the self, like positive talk comes from my previous experiences that I look back, I'm like, I have done this, I have accomplished this, remember what you have accomplished. Or you can always look at back to like, oh, look what you have now versus what you didn't have before. What you, what you have now versus what you wanted earlier. Like, you have that now. Like, I feel like there are so many things that you can use for yourself. Obviously try whatever works for you. Because for me, you know how people say like, it just like, saying to yourself like you look good you're great your body's great whatever or like you're like this what that stuff doesn't work for me i need like examples <laughs> to make it work for myself like some examples that i have pulled up from my previous experiences that's the way i can try positive self-talk uh another one taking a break i think taking a break from many things even the short ones helps a lot Many situations that like even like the crazy ones that like I don't know like uh, something as uh, as bad as like a fight with your partner or like with your um, someone with uh, someone at work or like some sort of a disagreement stuff like that that could take a toll and like you wouldn't know how to respond to that but sometimes just taking even like a day just to respond to them or just taking a day to just like collect yourself taking a walk like walk helps so much i always i was saying this just the other day to my friend that like let's go take a um, mental health walk like our stupid mental health walk and i'm telling you that helps so much like just sometimes walking around it helps just to like collect yourself because that's kind of like your break from the world like because i think our mind is constantly thinking about stuff all the time at least mine is because i'm always overthinking so it is important to just like take a step back from the situation, take a step back from whatever is going on. Like my very recent thing about my car and like how it needs to go to the repair shop and has to be done, I have to pay my deductible. Honestly, the whole April, whole months of April was awful. I gotta be honest, it was awful months for me. Between taxes, going, coming back from New York, brand deals, like it was such a crazy, crazy month. It was very hard. Now I'm just like, no, I need a break. 
I need to take it easy. Even the things with the car and everything, I'm like, it's gonna get done, it will be fine. Because, let's be honest, when you think about it, like, you can't do so much by just being angry or just by just being over the top with this situation because it just doesn't make a difference it really doesn't it, it just makes things worse because when when once you're calm uh in the situation and once you're like collected yourself first you're obviously going to make a better decision but also your health is not going to take a toll because i think as much as we think about so many things in life, so many other things in life, like money, relationships, status, career, our health comes first. And we never, we don't realize how much this kind of, like, I don't know, like a, not being calm and like being overly emotional, being overly angry takes a toll on us. And that is something that I realize more and more because I think the times that I have been calm or just like try to collect myself I've gone to sleep better, I have made better decisions like today, like <laughs> I probably got the same amount of sleep that like usually I get when I'm even stressed but today I have been like chill and I haven't taken anything and the last thing that I would recommend or I would say that, that helps is like visualizing technique this is something you can even do like not even visualize like uh, if you obviously if you can do it in person that's a different story like visualizing technique meaning like you can i don't know visualize yourself to be at the beach or i don't know forest or i don't know some hike some place like in like in california <laughs> like canyon um you can definitely experience these places in my terms i absolutely love being at the beach or even just imagining the beach or imagining the waves like hearing the sound of the waves it is so relaxing incredibly relaxing like i have never like i have always said this to myself and said to so many people too it's like something was water and the waves and the sound of the ocean it's just like it it really helps me calm down and like collect myself even the days that i feel so stressed or just so like everything being just so much i could just go onto the beach and just like put my uh, feet in the water or just like i don't know walk around the beach i just like collect myself like it really helps so much everyone's had their own thing for sure but this is my visual technique per se sometimes like i obviously cannot go to the beach all the time so even in Miami sometimes like I'm like yeah it's 15 minutes but sometimes that doesn't happen but even just the thought of that thinking about it really helps but also sometimes I just put the sound of like ocean ocean breeze or whatever it helps so much I not necessarily find the solution because I have to be honest none of these things is necessarily gonna help you find a solution to your problem about that situation that that's making you angry or emotional nine out of ten it might not but it's going to help you feel calm so that you can collect yourself and just like make a better decision and be more objective about the situation because i think there are so many things in our lives that can um, make us like i don't know overly emotional or just feel so much in the moment that you just kind of like screw this, I don't even want to, like, <laughs> I don't want to do this because I think there are many things that could trigger that for us like I know in the past sometimes when people ask me any question about my family and stuff I would be triggered and I would like stop, start being passive aggressive and like just, I don't know, like I wouldn't know how to answer or what to say but like now I have come to a better place, I'm so calm but also uh, pivoting to another thing is that like when you're calm even at even in this in, in the craziest situation first of all it makes you the kind of a person that like you you are so mature but also the other person is probably like crying themselves to sleep they're like what is going on like why is this person not freaking out why is this person like not like shouting not like flipping the table like what is going on because 
I'm just like, sometimes people just like, you know, th I, I'm just not that kind of person either, but I'm like, I can express in other ways. I'm just saying that, but like, when you're so calm, literally no expression, no self no expression at all, and you're just like, calm processing it, it will help. And trust me, you're not, unless it's something so urgent that you have to like make up your mind or do something right away, you can process it. You can give yourself the time to process what you need to do, but train your mind to be calm uh, in these cases, uh, just like some of the tips and the techniques that I just mentioned. Obviously, there are probably more out there, but these are some of the basic ones that I feel like it works out for me. Definitely the positive self-talk one is the controversial one for me because that yet seems to work. Like, I need to work on that, but breathing one and the visualizing technique helps so much. Like, it, I, I just, I know I say this a lot, but I'm just telling you guys it helps incredibly a lot. So definitely try that and hopefully uh, that will help you guys go through some of the bad places, bad situations that you have been in or you are in. So that was the episode for today. I hope you guys like this episode. If you do, please don't forget to subscribe and follow us on all the social platforms that you find this podcast on. And I'll see you guys next week with another episode. Bye guys. Bye.